Hello friends, it's Rachel Archelaus. What you're about to see is a conversation that I had with Sherry Reichert Ballou, and we just kind of get into it. So there's not too much context in the beginning, but we're talking about being your own leader, going full out, really living a life that you want to live, because that's what her and I love to talk about. So we didn't plan on making this public, but we just felt like, yeah, why not? I mean, this is what people talk about right now. And I know I love having these conversations. So why don't you have this conversation with us? And feel free to comment below if this resonates with you or you want to add to it or ask questions, because we're here for you and we're your incredible friends too. So I hope you enjoy and talk to you soon. So I'm really, really curious. What what came up? Well, I don't know. I mean, when I think about you, that's what I think about. But then I see, I, I don't know, I lost it. I was on someone's Instagram story and I, I saw this book about being non-binary. And I was like, yes. And the author was like all dressed up in all these amazing things and I just thought oh my god that's the world I want to live in I want to live in that world but at the same time I have noticed myself holding back still a little bit experiencing a little bit of fear in in the moments where I I want to go full out and I have noticed a little bit of fear um but I have been taking more action to get over what is causing the fear. So like mm. I'm doing the thing, but I just like, I have this, it's like, if you, if we can't do it now, when? <laughs> oh, right. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so glad we're talking about this. I love that you just brought all this up. And it also, especially because I always project onto you that it's so easy and you're just so self-expressed and you know what I mean? And so it's mm -hmm. really helpful for me once in a while to hear that it's not always like that for you. You know, it's easy to put, put you at the top of the mountain. Right. I get that. I look very natural and, you know, and it's true for, for the most part, but I have, I have edges too like everyone has an edge regardless of where they are and I'm I'm interested in my edges and going beyond them because that's where my evolution is so um, I've been feeling it lately it's really only when it comes to intimate alien because it's it's not about how I look I I go out with her look on all the time but yeah. when I'm being her it's different because when I'm being her, I'm being that alien energy here and it feels different to me. It feels unsafe because be, just because like, I'm not going to say that I understand what it's like to be a minority, but in the moments where I want to be intimate alien, like going camping or hiking or like even walking around the block was a little difficult. I remember back to all the like, all the times aliens are shot in movies that I've seen yeah. or going to the Arizona State Fair and like there's just this big exhibit and you walk through and there's like shoot an alien thing. And so it's a silly little thing that I'm readjusting right now, but that's the only time it comes up. It's like bringing her energy in in that public way um that's when it gets to me it's not really about like just what I look like aha uh -huh. yeah and it's also what I'm hearing is is it's specific to bringing her energy into yeah. the world it's that it's not when you're like this you know just who you are it does, you're not knocking up against edges no I have yeah. in the past like there have been edges there before for sure I'm something jumped in and I want to say it, which may not at all even be your experience, but I'm going to say it because I think it's what happened somewhat for me. I was on a call on an author panel yesterday, and I don't even know why we were talking about it. We started talking about something similar. We were talking about when people react negatively or there's hate or there's, we were just sort of talking about what that is, you know, and there was a psychologist and he was saying, obviously, when people react a certain way, that 
what they're seeing is pushing up against something in them. We all know this. It doesn't have anything to do with whatever. Okay, so what I, the reason I'm talking about intimate alien is because she has an energy that for me triggers like a, a, a desire, right? And I, I think that, again, this is about me, not you or not her, but it's like, I think that anytime someone's out in the world being really big, I think it can trigger people, right? But I think, yeah. it's, a good, I think it's a good trigger. I think I think we we human beings don't always realize that oh oh I see I'm being triggered by this person because they're calling to me somehow or who they are is is calling me out. Yeah. Do you do you know what I'm saying? I do. And this is a little different, but it I was thinking the other day about this and about how like you know, you see a rock star walking down the street and maybe you don't know them, but you can tell like there's the studded jacket and the like glitter boots and, you know, like they're people are going to look and maybe not even form a judgment. Maybe they're just looking. But like, you know, or if somebody is shooting a movie out on a street, you may not know what the movie is yet or who the people are, but you're probably going to be interested. And so it's more eyeballs than I'm used to as well. Oh, right. So, I mean, so that is another, right? Like these are pieces. I love this. This is so good. It's pieces of, of why, why it's a little bit of a stretch to right. come out, you know? And she is very, first of all, she's very magnetic, right? Not just even the look, but just energetically. Yeah. But also the look is very bold. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what else about I'm curious, like what else is coming up for you? Because I think, you know, I'm doing this class right now, Ale Ale Oxen Free, coming out of hiding. And so this is my favorite topic right now of all the topics. Nice. Right. You know, because it's so interesting to me and where you are, you're like way over right on. If there were a, a spectrum, you know, you're kind of way over on the, you know, most people would just look at you and think like, does she even need to talk about this, right? Yeah. But you do too. You have your edges too. Yeah. I love that piece. It's fascinating. I just wonder if the edges are all, are the edges all the same? What do you mean? And by well, the way, before we go any further, you look so adorable. Oh. I love orange on you and I love that hat. <laughs> this is why wears Waldo. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why I just felt, yeah, I love orange. You know, it's my favorite color. What I mean by are the edges the same? Is it that the content changes, but the um, process is the same? Like hmm. more eyeballs, people are going to judge me. It feels uncomfortable. Um, I'm not even, you know, I, I, I'm trying to, I don't even know which other ones there are. This is not appropriate. Hmm. That's a big one, you know, I but I don't know. People. <laughs> What'd you say? This comes from you from last time. I might offend people. I might offend people, right? Or or I'll make people uncomfortable, I think is a big one. If mm -hmm. I'm too whatever, if I'm too whatever, other people are going to be uncomfortable. Well, so back, I didn't have any problem with this whatsoever in high school. I I was like the freak. I had all kind of hair and I started in middle school. And so none of that ever bothered me. I did get hate for it. I did. I was bullied, like lots of stuff happened, but it didn't affect me. But in my twenties, so I, I took a, a break from really any outward expression in my early twenties. And then when I went back to it, the first time I dyed my hair green after that, I was scared. I was scared to go to the Starbucks. I was scared to go like have anyone see it. Um, Somebody saw it at the like little, I don't know, breakfast sandwich place that I went to. And she's like, oh, that color looks really good on you. And I said, oh, it's just for Halloween. Like I was terrified for people to think that I was, I don't know, that I like wanted my hair to be green, even though it was green. It was weird. But, you know, that that dissipates after a week or two. And I was like back to normal. I think in most most times I just do it and then like endure the discomfort for however long it lasts. And then I get used to it. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting because, you know, that's how I started to wear hats. Do you, do you know that? Yeah. That, I don't know. Uh, yeah, totally. Just, I mean, it's a, just a quick story because it's like, I always wanted to be a woman who wore hats, right? I was always like, I love the twenties. I would look at people who wore hats and be like, oh, I wish I could do that. You know? And, um, I repeated that all the time. And I had a boyfriend when I lived in New York who <laughs> he was just like, will you fucking shut up? Like, I think he was really, <laughs> place. that's how he talked to us from Jersey. He was like, really like bad boy. He was like, just fucking shut up, get a hat, put it on your head. You're going to feel stupid for a couple of weeks. And then you're going to be a woman who wears hats. Like, and I wish I had a recording of the way he said it. Cause he was like this Jersey boy, right? It would have been so cool to have right now. Um, but that's what it was. Right. And something about it where I was like, oh, like it never occurred to me that being uncomfortable could be a part of it because it felt to me like, if I'm uncomfortable, I'm not a woman who wears hats. I'm mm -hmm. faking, right? But that's, I think that's a really important piece of it is that it can be who we are and still feel uncomfortable. You know, I think, I think this is something that we don't talk about as much and I am really to blame for this because I talk about ease and doing what feels good and all the time. And while that's absolutely true for most things, like most things are going to build momentum at a rate that you can deal with, like that keeps the comfort level going, you know, but there are some things that we have more resistance to that maybe we will need to have some discomfort in order to really get over. Like for me, driving my RV, I'd always wanted to be a van life person but when I finally got it, I was terrified of it. I didn't drive it for months. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then my first trip in it, my first ever overnight trip in any RV, I drove across the country. And you better believe I was uncomfortable. <laughs> it was insane. Well, this is so great to hear, right? Because this again, right? Like I'm like, oh, Rachel can jump in an RV and drive it, right? Like yeah, and I did, and it was awesome, but I was still scared. <laughs> but that, and I think you're right, though. I think that's a piece that is so important that not just we, but I just think we don't talk about enough. And it is a little bit, it's a little bit um, slippery because of what you just said, that it is true that there's this sense of, oftentimes, it's like those places that feel hard, we don't want to go to because it's not the right path. But sometimes when it's hard, it's exactly the right path. I actually just made a video about this, about the difference between hard and challenging. Ooh, is it posted? Mm hmm oh, It's short. Sure. And basically, I was climbing a mountain the last week, and it was the steepest trail I'd ever been on. And I was like you know, stopping every few hundred feet to breathe and like lower my heart rate and was thinking, wow, this is hard. But something in my brain was like, mm, this isn't hard. I'm having fun. I'm in joy, but it's definitely challenging. And to me, the difference is challenging can be part of your joy, part of your path of least resistance. Um, but hard is when we're in resistance. Hard is when we are like putting the brakes on in some way, thinking against what we want to do or just something's not lined up right. Whereas challenging is totally part of our path of where we're wanting to go. It just may be a challenge. That is extraordinary, Rachel. I love yeah. that. You just really, I, I think you spell it out really succinctly too. Like, and, and that's important. It's really yeah, important right? because I don't want to do hard because that just means the energy is not lined up, but I definitely want to do challenging because that's where I grow and that's where I have fun. Right. Me too. And you know, yeah. And I, I love, it's funny because I think you said evolve earlier. Did you use that word? Yeah. I have a whole series of audio recordings for myself. This is called evolution doorway. Because it feels like there are certain places where I kind of know um, that's where I could go to grow. Mm. But it's like I haven't yet walked through the door to there. And 
I think those the, those are challenging, and I think I often get confused and might call them. I might even call them impossible sometimes. I think, or I might go to that like, it's just not me, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's a real for me. That's a real um, bamboozle that like it's not me because it wouldn't be calling to me. I don't think. I oh my gosh, we are so in sync all the time, which I love. <laughs> Our conversations, all right, so this morning, I went out on this hike. I, I told you, I left my house at um, quarter to six, got up at 4.30, and I'm not one that typically gets up early or leaves the house or doesn't have, like, I, I like to slowly get into my day. But anyway, I was leaving the trail, and I kept saying to myself, wow, no one would believe I did this. Like, this totally isn't me. But then I just thought, that's an old story. This is me. I'm here right now. I'm enjoying myself. I, it wasn't, no one forced me to do this. This is my idea. And so, of course, it's me. And so it's just like, we need to stop defining ourselves by some outdated thing. Whatever we're doing in the moment or whatever we want to do is us. I know. And I think <laughs> this is where I look to you a lot in life because it feels to me like you're often just kind of redefining in the moment feels like that from afar yeah. you know and truthfully I don't know my friend Maya I probably talked to you about her because you guys are similar in a certain way she does that all the time too she's like you two are alike in that you're just like oh oh that's fun okay I'll do it you know like and you're yeah. both very creative and you kind of move towards your creativity all the time but aside from you two I'm trying to think who else, like nobody else is even dropping in my mind of who, who kind of allows that hmm. or invites it even. I mean, wow. I think I, I look to you to be somebody like that because really? you, you have deliberately changed your life many times. And I think that's what it's about. It's like, what do I want to be? Not, not what is my momentum, you know? Yeah, thank you. Gosh, I love that. I would, I certainly would love to be in that camp. I think, I think that's a lot of what I'm up against right now is, <laughs> this is great. It's the same thing as, oh, I wish I could wear hats, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's the exact thing. Like, oh, I wish, I wish I were that. Like, I wish I were like Rachel and Maya, right? It's that same mentality of like, as if it's, as if it's unavailable. Yeah. So that's good to see because we've already determined that's just bullshit. There's no. I know. And for me, it's I wish I was more comfortable filming in public. And I, I wish I was more comfortable being, you know, intimidalian in different situations. And I didn't care who was looking, you know, <laughs> like that's that's where I am right now, because and I'm I'm coming at this this time from trying just trying to let my desire run and so I'm trying to build up that desire energy as a way to ease me into the action of it what is the why behind that why do you want to have this YouTube channel that's really fun with intimate alien because it feels fun it feels expansive and it feels I have this certain feeling that I get in my body where my like evolution is for my creativity. We've talked about that. And that's what it feels. Like. It feels like more of me is yeah. in my body when I think about that. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. And so there's this huge, well, that's a big why, right? Like that's a really yeah, big why. That's, that's my ultimate why. That is, that is. That my only motivation or inspiration. So, I mean, that's so huge. So what I'm curious about, and I'm just asking this obviously for myself, because then it's like, what happens when you step out to do that? What's the, what goes on? Like, so here's a big why that's always within you, but what happens then when you're out wanting to film and you don't quite maybe feel comfortable stepping into it? Well, I think, so I haven't yet like left the house as her and then chickened out. My oh. process has been this so far. I've been wanting to do these things. I have a couple ideas in my head and um, I've been doing more filming 
as myself out hiking in public. Yeah. So that's getting me used to it. I've also like, there's this one camp spot I want to go with her so she can go camping, which would be so hilarious. Oh my God. Um, and I was, I had never been camping at this place before. And so I didn't know if I'd be the only one. I didn't know if there would be like a whole, like if it'd be all filled up. Cause it's just a backcountry site. It's not like a reservable place. Like you could just right. walk up. And so that like this morning I went there cause it's also at a lake and there were like six people camping there. And so I thought, okay, this is so comforting. Now I know I won't be alone. I know like there will be a bunch of people there. It felt really safe to me. And so it's like, I'm whittling down my fears one at a time without even planning to do that. That's just what's been happening. So I feel like I'm getting ready naturally because I am focusing on the desire. And when it's time, like when, when there isn't that much resistance anymore, then it'll be natural to go and do it. Oh, I like that. And I'm, you know, of course I'm asking because I'm, I'm so interested. <clears throat> I'm interested in practical steps, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we can share with people because otherwise it seems like it's just kind of like, oh yeah, that's what Rachel does. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the problem is that it can seem that way. Like, oh, they can do it because look at her, you know, she's so cute and fun. Of course she can do that. <laughs> but, but when you have practical steps, I think that really helps. Like, so you're whittling down. It's almost like I'm thinking of like when you have, when you're selling something and they say like address the objections. It almost mm -hmm. feels yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And in the yeah. meantime, I'm doing my best to not be hard on myself and to not like think that I'm doing anything wrong or being you know being a chicken or you know what I mean. Yeah. So that, well, like, that's really important for everybody to know. That is really important too, right? That it's like the that it's a process is the other thing. That it's not like people aren't just born. I mean, some people are born with certain like just ways of being, but other times, I mean, I think this is interesting. I do think we get called. Like, did you say your soul your soul calls you? Should I make that up? What calls you? I don't know if I'd call it my soul, but yeah, it's I mean, my 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 true big full energy because I seem like I know because um, I just I see myself as a person as just like a teeny part of my wholeness right yeah. but, but when I feel in my body that full alive on fire and engaged that's when I know I'm really being all of me and that's what I look for and I think that's what uh I think that's what people long for don't you yeah it feels I really, so good. Yeah. Because people want to be on purpose. They want to know their purpose. But really, that's the, we can only know that if we're feeling that. And it has nothing to do with, I mean, that feeling could come from eating a donut or like taking a walk. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with what I do. But yeah, I look for that feeling in everything. Ah, oh, I'm glad we're recording this. Because, <laughs> yeah, I have a, an expression you probably heard, you know, live in the dream. Hmm. Do you know that? Yeah. So living the dream. Yeah. That came from the Hay House thing, right? Like when I, when I did not get that contract and I was so depressed and then I was like, well, I can live the life of a Hay House author. I don't need to have a contract to do that. And yeah. that is that it's exactly what you're talking about. It's like tapping into those feelings without needing the outside, whatever, you know, acknowledgement or accolades or awards or whatever it is from the outside that says oh here look you're you're this and I feel and like actually, that's the, yeah. this was a, all right so I don't know when this was maybe last week but I did think of you and this topic because I thought about big red <laughs> and I was like this has to be a decision that we make we've probably even said that before like Wow. having the confidence to do what we want to do and to be who we want to be. We can't just wait for it. We decide to be it, right? <laughs> yes. That is so, but you know, I mean, and it, it sounds obvious when you're saying it right now, but actually that's a huge, huge piece. And and something I have to keep reminding myself of either. It's not like I just have that epiphany once and boom, I'm done. Like I have to keep that energy up. 
Right. And I, I think that's so important because again, you know, I'm thinking of our conversation, but I'm also in my head thinking, you know, because this is something so much that I want to talk about, right? And work with people with. And it's like, it's so important to be thinking like, oh yeah, how often are we all just reverting to that thing of, back to that, just who I am, mm-hmm. you know, rather than making a decision. Yeah. Choose and continue to choose. Right. And I'm thinking because I had, this is so great. I love this so much. This is a, I was having a conversation. I had a coaching call with someone this week and she was coaching me. And I said to her, I wish that I could be a leader. I wish I could be a leader, but I feel this is one of those places where I feel the edges of what I'm allowed because I grew up with, first of all, I grew up like this, right? Like wanting to hide, wanting to be under the radar wanting but then it's like when he even started to like come out I want everyone to like me and you can't be a leader you can't be a leader with that attitude first of all of I don't want people to see me (laughs) and I want everyone to like me they just Mm -hmm. don't don't. so it's just an interesting I'm just this is kind of where I am right now but you're making me think like it's still a choice I don't know what I want to say about yeah you can forget that you used to choose being hidden and wanting people to like you and just align with where you are right now and that you already are a leader. You've already led thousands of people to love (laughs) and appreciation (laughs) and laughter and fun. And you can just accept that, oh, I guess I'm a leader already. Maybe I'll have more fun with it. That's uh, that's interesting. I mean, you're an author, Sherry. You're a published author who was at Target, even if it was for a few weeks. You're a leader. <laughs> but I think here's the place where, you know, like we, I know where I'm not, like where I know where I'm not showing up. So and this is a good example. I can talk to you about this. Maybe we already have, but it's like this whole, that whole Black Lives Matter thing just threw me off kilter, right? Because I was reading so many comments. Did I already tell you all this? No. So there are just all kinds of comments out there all over the place about. Oh, about love. Yeah. Right. Love it is enough. Like, yeah. yeah. Love isn't enough. Oh, yeah. Because we did talk about this. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that really got in me. But what I saw once I kind of got through being frazzled by it was like, well, so what? Like, why can't I just be? Why can't I just be have the feelings I have? And who cares if I'm a snowflake? Or, you know, someone calls me a snowflake. Why do I, like, why does that stop me is what I was really looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, why would I not still stand firmly in what I believe and still just be talking about love? Because that's what I want to do. See, so here's where I can add for you maybe something that would help okay so in this moment you are saying that you were looking for why can't I do what I want to do and you had that experience before of like introspection but you're talking about it again now so you're activating it again why can't I be who I want to be but it's not even the truth because we had that conversation publicly on our first incredible friends conversation. And so you did talk about it and we did talk about love and how it's enough. And, and so even if it didn't go farther than that, you are painting a picture of yourself to yourself. That's not even accurate. Interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah. Thank you for noticing that and, you know, and stopping. Because you're right. It's activating. It is, right? It just activates it again. Yeah. Huh. It can be hard to get out of our own stories. It, you know, it's not like, like, that's all we're talking about today. I mean, it's like <laughs> recalibrate, recalibrate, recalibrate. What do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? And it's it's like that. It's an every moment decision, which is why so few people be who they want to be, right? That's why you're teaching about it. That's why I'm 
talking about it. And so um, I just wanted to remind you that you're talking about an old story. You're not that person. You are who you want to be. Even if it's challenging, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not doing it. I love that. I love that. Even that. Okay, so we just had this conversation 10 minutes ago, and already I need to go back to it. I need to have it again, right? Which is that conversation about it might be uncomfortable, but right. that doesn't mean it isn't real, or that doesn't mean it isn't me, or it doesn't. That's so important. Because I think there is kind of, I don't know where did we get this from, where, or at least I did, which is like, oh, it feels uncomfortable. Stop. Oh, it feels uncomfortable. That's the wrong way, right? Yeah. Well, I think even for me, and I'm a person who seems to find it easy to follow her desires. Like, I usually follow my desires. I'll say for most of my life, like, I don't know even where I got that because I wasn't modeled that. Like, there wasn't really a person in my life <laughs> who followed their desire through uncomfortableness and everything like when I went to college so I I dropped out of high school I got my GED and then I went to community college for two years or more because I don't think I, maybe I went for four years because I didn't go full-time but I signed up on my own I didn't have a college fund you know I went to orientation alone like I had to do it all myself like mm -hmm. neither of my parents went to college my mom went for a couple classes as an adult, but she didn't like offer me any advice based on that. And so anyway, uh, my mom came with me one day. I just, I don't know, I brought her to school with me or just to show around. And she's like, weren't you scared to sign up? And I was like, I don't know, you know, like I didn't think about it. And she, Cause like, that's, that's our norm in this country, right? Like, right. like don't do things by yourself. Don't do anything risky. Stay right. safe. Don't put yourself out there. Get a stable, you know what I mean? Like, so even the, even the act of like signing up for college by myself, like made my family like, wow, you're brave. <laughs> Which yes. is so funny, considering all the other crap that I do that terrifies them now. So, um, but yeah, I don't know why I started telling that story, but oh, maybe because we're not modeled we're not modeled to let our desires grow enough yeah. to pull us forward, right? Say that again. That's such a beautiful. We're not shown that we can let our desires grow enough to pull us forward. Oh, my God. That is so beautiful. Yes. Right? Yeah, because if we let the energy grow of the desire, then we'll be more magnetized to it. Makes the whole thing easier. Right. Well, it doesn't mean it won't be a challenge in some way, but it'll be easier to go. Well, and it reminds me of what you said when we first got on the call, which is like, if not now, when? It's not gonna, you know, it's not like it's gonna get easier, right? Because all we're doing, I think, you know, it's, it seems to me that it's like, as we grow older, we can often just tell ourselves the same story over and over and over. Like I just did with you, you called me on it, but it's like, as we get older, we're just sort of like reinforcing, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is what's true. Oh, no, no, no. Oh no, I don't do that. It's not getting, it's not like we're growing into anything unless, unless we choose to, I think. Yeah, I totally feel that. I think for the majority of people, that's just, they just like, succumb to life like they just succumb to like whatever you know like okay I'm, I'm getting old I'm going to slow down you know I'm not in as good a shape I'm not gonna try anymore like I see a right. lot of that right and I think that that's like one of the things that drives me first and foremost for myself right I don't know why but I have a huge thing about regret like I've always ever since I was little like imagine myself on my deathbed and I'm always like um imagining am I gonna is that gonna feel good am I gonna be happy am I gonna you know like there's something about that and I I'm all drawn to that you know regrets on the deathbed one of the biggest ones is I didn't live my own life like that's one of the top regrets and I just feel like that's so I mean in some ways who cares right in some ways it's like you know whatever just 
But on the other hand, right, yeah, like in the grand scheme, there's no wrong way to live your life. Right. But yeah. then on the other hand, it's like you just said earlier, it feels so good, right? Like it's fun. We're I've heard you say this before, and I often think about you when you talk about Earth. It's it's a playground. It's a place to bring our creativity alive and bring things in a form and it, it's fun and so on one hand it doesn't matter but on the other hand we're here for a long time really you know why not and also I do think that there's something like I'm just looking at you like the impact that you've had on me and my life because of who you are I feel like in some ways then that expands the whole universe i think yeah i think we all do in every moment we're expanding the universe and it feels fun to do doesn't it (laughs) it does feel fun to do it feels fun and it's more fun than that opposite place of sort of i wish i could or i'm sorry i didn't or i should have done or you know not me those places are just they're not fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's a question for you. So back to Intimate Alien mm-hmm. and going out, let's just say, going out and filming somewhere. One of the things that I notice sometimes is there are times when I look in my closet and I'll put on something, you know, and I'll just be like, whoa, I'm so fun. This is so fun. And then other times I'm kind of like, I'm self conscious, right? Like it's sort of, I don't know why. It could be the same exact outfit even. And I feel like, ooh, and, and I, let's say that we have a desire to do something like go out and film, just, let's just use that. But the wrong person is there. You know, the one who doesn't really feel it. Do we still just go do it? Is that how, I'm curious about that place. I know for me, I try to rely on the energy. I don't even know if that makes sense to people. But if I'm feeling really good in myself, if I'm feeling really centered and stoked and excited, then that energy is going to be what propels me and I'm going to not feel self-conscious. Right. To a degree, right? I'm not like infallible. But if I'm already going into it worrying or not feeling great, but I'm still putting the outfit on anyway or something, then I'm in a very precarious place where I'm going to notice all the people who aren't smiling or all the people who are like looking and I'm going to think, oh, they're laughing at me. They're thinking I'm weird when they're probably not even noticing me. But it's like whatever I try to align to my biggest and brightest and clearest energy before I do anything so that I am clear of whatever else is going on. Again, it doesn't always work, but that's right. my approach. So, but I, again, like I, I want, I want somewhere practical. Like, so how do we start? So how do we start taking the steps? Like we have this vision and we know we've been that person sometimes, but we're not like aligned with her at the moment, but we want to, we want to move closer, right? Today's the day. It's time. It's now. That's all we have. I'm just curious about that. Is there, maybe is there a baby step? I I try to stay on the positive side of everything. So I, I'm trying, yes, the time is now. Yes, yes, there is no better time than now. But I also, I'm never going to force myself into something because then it will go wrong. <laughs> and there is more time, right? There's actually no lack of time. But mm. it's also okay to be inspired into action so I try not to like bully myself into anything Mm. and then as far as action steps I mean I think what we we both do to align every day is important like to have a daily practice of meditation and like what you were doing living the dream like be who you want to be aligned to the energy that you want to feel um I have these post-it notes on my computer and it says freedom exhilaration ease flow choices options joy love and I I try to run that through my body slower so I can feel what all those words feel like yeah and so I'm 
priming myself, right? I think Tony Robbins uses that term. Maybe Brendan does too. Yeah. You're priming yeah. your body because yeah. that changes your hormones. It changes your physiology. And then you become that person. And so I think what we're talking about in really evolving the baby step is the step. Like you have to work up to that. And if you are treating yourself as a, you know, a loving, worthy being every day, that's what's going to allow you to really bloom without so much back and forth, you know, because we're talking about being challenged, but we're not, it's a very subtle, at least for me, like, like if I had any inkling in my body of like doing something I didn't want to do, this would not be a problem. I just choose not to ever do something I don't want to do. So yeah. 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 I do. I do. You know, and the other thing that's coming up is Dr. Joe, which I think we did talk about last time too, but I've been, um, you know, I've been a fan of his meditations for a long time, but I've kind of have a renewed, (laughs) a renewed connection to it. You know, having gone through that really tough time last week, and I, you know, I've been intentionally Dr. Joeing it and really looking at the process that he has of sort of bringing stuff to the surface. Like for me, I might bring to the surface this old story. You know, I think that's the thing. So we bring up an old story and we kind of look, you know, we lay it out in front of us and look at it. And then he has us live into the new story. He doesn't, I don't think he uses that term, but that's how I think of it. And I think there's something so powerful to me about that. Like, this isn't a very good good way to look at it, but I was looking at like kind of a pimple, right? Like something needs to get, needs to come out. <laughs> you know, it needs to it needs to rise from underneath the surface to get cleared out. And I, so sometimes I think like last week I feel like I was in that process. Like it didn't feel very good, but there I think is sort of a toxins rising. I don't know. I, I just do wonder about that. Like, it just seems like whether it's karma or story or whatever it is, they're so multi-layered for me, you know, so something I might have dealt with, you know, in therapy when I was 20 and then it came back up when I was 40 and then it comes back up now. And I'm like, wow, where did you come from? Yeah. I look at it differently. Okay. I so, appreciate that. I think it's even easier than that. You like, do? Yeah. So I think that whenever we're going in a more positive direction than normal, so like, you know, we all have our status quo, but when we choose to feel even better during our day or like align to a new desire or something, then we're going to, we're going to move up a notch. And the difference of how better we feel and then what we were tolerating before is going to get known. So Oh, this happened to me yesterday. So I'm, I had two money conversations yesterday and I, we were talking about wealth and our relationship to money. And I realized that I was uncomfortable speaking about massive wealth. I was downplaying my desire for like a private jet and like, like hundreds of millions of dollars I noticed within myself a little bit of discomfort around this idea of like being public about massive wealth and even being public about the wealth that I currently have. And I was shocked by that, but I realized like, Oh, okay. So here's something I don't like and I don't want, and it's an old story, but from my point of view, I don't need to go into it. I, I don't need to know anything else about it other than, it's uncomfortable and I don't want it to be, then I go and calibrate what I want. So I don't need to do anything about this. This is fine, but I, I do want the resolution, right? So that's when I calibrate to, Oh, I, I'm excited for other people who have massive wealth and I love watching the Kardashians in their private jet. It feels so good and homey and convenient and it's okay for me to want that. And yes. of course, you know, it's there for me already vibrationally and it's a comforting place and the universe is abundant. There's no amount of taking from anyone else to have anything and there's, it's wow. all there to play with. So 
instead of activating this more, which will only make it bigger, yes. I just notice the slight uncomfort and then go to where I want to go. I love that. First of all, I love you're you're a master. You're a master at um, it's not really diplomacy, but I'm just going to call it diplomacy for now. You know what I mean? Like you're a master at not making other people feel wrong. Well, because I really yet, don't feel like they are. Like everyone can have their own exercises and processes and philosophies. I'm into that. I mean, I love that. I know, but then I but I love the way you gently do that. And then, but also, I do really appreciate what you're saying about. Um, it goes back to, I think, you, you tell me if this is wrong, but that this is, I think, why you manifest quickly. Yes. Right? Like, I think yeah. that might be, that might be a huge teaching point about it. Like that, you know, of course, there's nothing wrong with what I said or, or doing mm -hmm. that, but it's, it's going to be a slower manifestation than what you're talking about. And I think that's just an important, not that it's right or wrong, but it's just an important thing to notice. Yeah. You want to have a private plane? I used to. Like, I used to have that on my vision board. I haven't thought about it personally in a while, but why not? I mean, if I had, like, a billion dollars, sure. Why not? <laughs> I love flying. So, you know, it would be more convenient if I just wanted to, like, go to Fiji or something. Like, oh, I don't even have to book a ticket. I love that. I love that. Wow. Is there anything else? That was a lot of really good stuff. I know. Oh my gosh, it's almost been an hour. I know. That's what. That's what I was. I just looked up and I thought I was like, wow. I can't. Do we miss anything? in our, we have. You know. I don't even okay. Know. So here's the thing. I decided that I'm living all out, and it's okay if it takes a little time to get there. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to affirm that to you because you are honestly a major inspiration and reminder to me of that. And so thank you. Wow. That's such an honor because you're such an inspiration to me as you know, because we talked about that. I love that. I feel like talking to you has been kind of a recommitment. Same. Yeah. And I oh, appreciate that. Yay.